Hey everyone. Well, um, this week's been interesting, I should say. Um, first off, um, just want to wish all the mothers out there a uh, happy belated, 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 belated Mother's Day. <laughs> um, mine was alright. I basically, um, my family, we um, drew my mom to dinner and we just helped out around the house and I know it seems maybe a little cheap or maybe it seems like too much I don't know I know families have different traditions when it comes to Mother's Day but this is one that we usually do and um, basically yeah we took her out to dinner and that was pretty nice as you get older when you get around my age which isn't that old just in case you guys are wondering, it's not that old. <laughs> but when you get to my age, it becomes a little more difficult to have your immediate family around. To go out together and just spend time together. And sometimes you really want to do that. You know? You want to be like it was before. So it was actually pretty nice. Um, also, Monday I had a job interview at Vivendi Games. Um, just in case you guys don't know who they are, if you haven't heard of them, they own a couple of other companies, such as Blizzard and, well, Sierra, and a couple of others, but I can't really remember what their, the other companies are called. Blizzard is well known for their game called World of Warcraft, also the Burning Crusade, the second one that followed after that. And if some of you, which I'm sure you do, own a PS2, they made the game 50 Cent Bulletproof, which I haven't played. Anyway, I went to the interview. Um, a friend from YouTube actually uh, gave me some advice because she's a software tester. And I just asked her, well, what questions, what do they usually do when they have an interview? And so she kind of gave me some advice on what to um, study for, what to think about, what they might ask and it actually came in handy. And so basically I went there on Monday. Um, Vivendi Games is actually somewhat far away from me. If you take the 60... Um, okay, I won't do freeways because if you're not from California or within Los Angeles, it'll just throw you off completely. So basically it's about a 45 minute drive to an hour. And it, it looked nice. It's, um, I, I don't know what it's called, but, um, they're located within a building. And within that building are numerous companies. Each floor is something different, which I find very strange. So I had to report to a certain floor, um, a sign in sheet, and I just had to fill out certain information. And there are about 20, maybe 23 people there. And then, um, the main person who's doing the interviews separate us into three different groups, about five per group. And then they just asked us a series of questions. They went around and just asked everyone um, just about maybe six questions. And they put the two per person just to prepare you, I guess, for what the questions were going to be. After that, they uh, took us into another room where um, we rejoined the group and then there were all these PC computers around, so we just sat down and we're signed, not signed, but we could sit anywhere we wanted to. And um, basically, they had a piece of paper there and they said, We want you to, um, so we want to see your writing skill, your writing style. We want you to be as descriptive as possible. You know, just write whatever, um, write however much you can about a certain description. And the topic for this description was how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yes, I know. It sounds funny, almost too good to be true. It sounds too easy. The thing is that they want you to be very descriptive. You have to talk about the bread, how you get the slices out, where you find the bread, everything. Peanut butter, what does it look like? How do you open the jar? Heck, where is the jar located? Once you open the pe peanut butter, then what? You stick the full knife in? I don't think so. So you have to be very descriptive about doing everything. And they give you about 15 minutes to do, to do that. 
So that was kind of interesting and a little bit fun because I like to add a little sarcasm and little side comments, you know, just to make them laugh. And then the, I guess the final test was um, to actually install a PC game. Um, and we actually had a sheet to go according to that you installed this PC game. And then once it's installed, by the way, it's two discs, so you had to actually take out one and put the other one in and continue installing it. But once it was installed, you had to play the game, and there are these sets of objectives to go through. They're very, not tedious, but every three or four seconds you had to keep checking to make sure that you're doing the right thing. Basically what they want you to do is um, look for bugs. Anything that didn't seem right. So if you saw like a line going through like a thread of a different color, you can mark that off. Or, um, I don't know, just anything that didn't seem right. And they put a deliberate block in there as well. And a block basically means that you have to literally exit the game, unplug, restart. Something that you can't do while you're playing the game. So let's say you walk into a room, all the doors are locked and there's nowhere to go. What do you do? Well, obviously you turn off the game. You have to reset it. It's something that you, you can't do within the game just by pressing on the buttons, basically. That's a block. And they put one deliberately in there. And I'm pretty sure everyone found it. The block that they designed is when you got to the next level, you knock out two guys, and it says pick up their guns, you press forward, and you don't move. They disabled moving. You cannot move forward, back, left, or right. You can turn around somewhat, but you can't move forward or back. So basically what they said is you uh, exit the level and then you reload it and that will enable you to move. And then you go through the rest of the level and write down all these bugs that you can find. And you kept that for about maybe 30 or 40 minutes. And it was kind of fun. And, you know, I talked with some of the people and that's the one thing that I find somewhat interesting. Everyone's friendly. I don't know if you apply at different jobs, maybe people aren't, maybe people are more secretive, they are as open. Everyone's very friendly. You know, they're open about where they came from, what college they went to, what their backgrounds are, where they used to work. Everyone's very open, they don't mind talking. They don't. Even when the, the person who's interviewing you is not there. I know some people like to put this fake, you know, um, this fake type of person trying to be the person that they think the boss wants them to be. Everyone was, from what I can tell, legit. But it's just nice to see that there's more friendly people out there. There's not progressive, um, aggressive people, you know, just stopping everyone to get their way. Everyone seemed very nice and very polite. Um, so after that, I took about an hour to get back home. That was fun. And um, basically what they said is that they're going to call us either Wednesday, which was yesterday, or Thursday, which was, or is today. And sadly, I did not get called. So, um, yeah, I feel a little down, a little sad, you know, because that would have been nice. Um, the video game that I've heard that they were supposed to be testing was Scarface, or the Nintendo Wii. So that would have been something. And then I would have had something to really fill you guys in with. But, um, oh, it comes out in July. Just in case you're wondering. But, you know, I think if I just keep searching, I'll find the right job. The one that I know would be better than this one, or probably any of the other ones that I probably didn't get. But yeah, I thought I might do good in. So, I'll keep you guys posted. I'll see what happens with my job search. Yeah. <sighs> it's already near the end of the week and I feel like uh, it's been too long I think that the interview and just the anticipation that someone's going to call to tell you to come back and then they train you pay you while you're being trained you know it just it makes you feel like that was it but I guess well, it turned out that it wasn't but we'll see what's going to happen um Hmm. Wow, that was almost that. That was like my main topic for this. Um. Oh, well, I guess I can backtrack a little bit. There was one thing I wanted to mention. Um, Friday, I actually went um, popping. I guess you can say. You know how um, 
when you go to a certain block, I guess, sometimes, I'm not really sure how you say it, but sometimes usually out, outside malls, you usually have people who dance on the street, you make donations, and they pop. Um, well, every Friday, a certain group will actually go to this theater that I usually go to, and all Friday nights, around 8 or 9 o'clock, they break dance, aka they also pop. Um, and I actually started watching them pop for, I've been watching them pop for quite a while, although it's a different group, but some of the people still remain there. But, um, I started watching them, I guess, back in November, maybe even October. And well, it progressed, people changed, and then they even went from popping to breakdancing, but yet you still see some popping in and things like that. And I actually, um, I actually did pop once in front of an audience that was there. And for those who really don't know me, I am a very, 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 very shy person. Even though I can talk to you, obviously. But if I could actually see everyone, I would probably choose my words differently. I wouldn't be as open about my personal life or what I was doing or how I feel about certain things. I don't know, that's just the way I am. But for some reason, I can talk to this funny little web camera and I'll be okay. But, um, yeah. So I actually went there and I saw them break dancing. I actually did a, a recording. I'll probably post it up at the end of this blog. Hopefully it looks right. Um, just to show you what I sometimes do on Friday nights, how I spend my free time. Because all you guys see is me recapping what I usually do. You don't really see me going outside or, or doing much of anything besides this. You know, I, no matter how descriptive I am, I can show you a video and that just gives you a better idea of what I usually do. So, yeah. Um, and that's what I did on Friday. Oh, and here's some good news. Um, when it comes to GameStop, Okay, there was a huge deal that was going on, as most of you guys know from my previous videos. And um, basically, I don't work there anymore. And it really got to me in some ways. So, um, as you can see, there was someone who I didn't get along with after that, who still worked there. So, amazingly, this week, I really, really hate that. Okay, this is the second time a dryer's been turned on while I'm doing a vlog. <laughs> I really hate that. Isn't that like, isn't that rude? Isn't it? I, I thought I was turning into a belly person for a second. I almost said like too many times. I swear, that's rude. Look, you can hear it nice and loud. I'm obviously doing something, doing recording. They can kind of see, judging from the angle. <sighs> anyway, sorry, it just gets frustrating. I can't go anywhere without someone bugging me. I can't. Someone will always walk in through the door, walk in somewhere, and and just throw off my concentration from 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 doing this. It happens every time. You can probably check almost every other video. There is be some, some, someone distracting me, asking me to do something or going in and out of the room. To, I don't know. It, it bugs. I have no place to really be alone. So if I have a bad day, I actually have to face people. You know, if I feel sad or I feel angry, if I just want to be left alone, I can't. Maybe it sucks. It does. But, you know, if I want to express my thoughts or pains or how bad my day went and I want to express it to you guys I want to be able to do it alone I don't want people watching me or coming in and out hearing little thoughts of what I have to say anyway um, so my friend calls me up on Monday the same day of my interview and he lets me know that the manager the one who um, I had some no trouble with, but I didn't really get that much along with after a certain incident. He got terminated. And I know usually you're not supposed to say hooray or, or be happy about it, but 
I just felt a lot better that something like that happened. To me, he was the reason why I don't really work there anymore. You know, I didn't really, I, I myself didn't get fired, or I don't know what you would call it, but he was the one in charge, and he's the one who did something shady, I guess you could say, you know? He knew that I wasn't going to quit, but he went ahead and replaced me anyway. And that's basically what this whole thing was about. You know, he replaced me when I wasn't really leaving. And that really sucks. And so I just got a little angry at him for doing that. You know, I didn't get back at him. I didn't do anything. I just, whenever I went there, I just ignored him. I didn't talk with him. He didn't talk with me either. But I guess, you know, they say what goes around comes around. That's what I see. That's exactly what I saw. You know, he did something bad to me, something bad happened to him. And that's it. End of story. I'm happy I think he got exactly what he deserved. So, I'm a little pleased about that. Um, if you guys disagree with me, that's okay. You know, if I was looking at it from your point of view, I, I might say, you know what, that I might not be, have been right to feel well because someone got fired. Even though they did, might have done something bad to you, maybe you should not have been too pleased about it. But, yeah. And I was watching someone else's vlog. Um, I, I don't know what his name is. I'll probably put it up here. Because I saw their vlog. Um, they were um, released from GameStop as well. And they do a, an entire summary of how GameStop works. Exactly, almost exactly everything you should know about them. Um, just to let you know, it's a negative thing about GameStop. But it does give you a lot of information of what we kind of go through, I guess. Um, well, like I said, um, he subscribed to my blog, and so I just checked out one of his more recent videos, and he just talked about GameStop. And if you've ever worked there, if they've ever done something bad to you, um, I guess you would want to check it out. If you really want to know how GameStop works, or, or just sometimes how they can make you feel because he really puts a lot of emotion into this it's a lot of anger but if you really want to watch it I'll, I'll put some link up but yeah that's why I did that's how my week's turning out um hopefully this Friday or Saturday I'll be doing something with uh with someone they know who they are I'm not gonna say a name they know who they are but hopefully that goes well. No, I'm not going to tell you. I don't care if you message me. I'm not going to tell you. Anyway, um, I guess that's it. Heroes. One episode left. Now, basically, it's come down to this. Sorry, I know. I, I know. I was about to finish the video, and I, I have to talk about Heroes. I have to. There's one episode left. How's it going to turn out? What's going to happen? You know, if you really think about it, chances are it's not going to explode. The, the building or the entire New York section, it's not going to go off. It won't. You know? Um, just think about it. You know, they have to continue the series. It's not a series finale. It's a season finale. If they destroy that thing, what happens? Well, they have to go to a different place now, don't they? Maybe Los Angeles, maybe Milwaukee, maybe Texas. Why not Canada? Why not somewhere else if they destroy? So, I don't know. It just seems a little strange that there's so much effort into stopping this explosion. Why would they go ahead and blow it up? You know? Or maybe just show that you can't change what's already been put in motion. So that would kind of suck. But I don't know. That, that's what I think. But one episode left. I hope it's a two hour thing. Because one hour it seems a bit much. It seems like you're really trying to squeeze in everything. It seems like a Spider-Man 3. Not to be negative. But it seems like a Spider-Man 3. But I guess we'll find out soon enough. How and what happens. Man that's going to be crazy. Also for those of you who watch Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged. Um... Yeah, he's still little, little Karibo. He's still on YouTube. 
if you want just go ahead and check out my subscriptions who who I watch basically and just scroll down he's still there he's still I guess putting videos up I think 17 18 and 19 are still there but um he's making an abridged movie you know you hear the movie well he's doing his um overdubbing and I guess he I don't know if he'll shrink the movie or if he'll do the entire movie with his overdub that would be something but he's gonna do it and it's coming out soon he, has, he even has trailers for this so I know it's gonna be something very big so I'll keep you guys updated on that and uh, yeah that's basically it um, so I just want to say hi to all my friends who are on YouTube I'm probably sh I'm sure I won't be able to name everyone but um let's see there's <laughs> David Paul Emma of course can't forget you um, <laughs> Emily the other Emily and also maybe a couple friends from MySpace um, Daniel the other Daniel Denise Aldo my fellow YouTuber, you guys have to check him out. He's pretty cool. I promise. If not, please remind me. Um, yeah, so thank all my friends on MySpace. Um, also, um, Desiree, Nadia, Darlene, basically everyone who's on my top 16. Um, yeah, if this seems like it's really bizarre or strange that I'm doing this, it's the people who are on my top 16 on MySpace, I put them there because I don't see them every day. I don't keep in contact with them. That is almost my only way of keeping in contact with them. So for me to do shout outs and things like that, to me, it's my way of really saying hi to them. You know, I can't just go to their house and say, hey, what's up? How are you doing? I can't. You know, they either work, they're, they're busy doing other things. And it just, you know, we can't hang out all the time. So those are the people who I really want to stay in contact with. And yeah, that's basically it. And if I do see you often, for those of you who are watching, if I see you often enough, you're not going to make my talks top 16. You're past that. You don't belong on a top 8 or anything. You're, you, you don't qualify. You're already past it. There's no level higher than that. You know, once you surpass my top 16, that's it. You don't need to be on there. You don't need to be displayed. But yeah. Wow, I covered a lot. <laughs> okay, if this thing, if it seems like I, I really rambled through everything, I'm sorry. I just, I don't know, I just had a lot to talk about. And the distraction just really threw me off and made me go on a tangent. So, um, I hope you guys are doing good. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I really do. And um, hopefully I'll hear from you guys soon. Also... Um, check out one of my friends. She barely started doing her um, her blogs. Her name or her um, channel, I guess, is called Dear Debs. She basically helps people with their problems. If you have problems, go ahead and write her, and she'll give you your her advice. It's really nice. It's very good. I would definitely recommend it. I'll definitely put a link here so you can check it out, and let me guys know what you think. Okay. Anyway. Um, like I said, I'm going to say this a thousand times, I swear. Um, have a good week. Have a good weekend. I'll see if I can put up another blog. All right. Take care.